minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You are now tapped into the coolest reptile podcast in the world. I'm your boy, MJ. What is good? If this is your first time tapping in, do your boy a favor. Hit that like button. More importantly, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell, especially if you're into reptiles, if you're just getting into reptiles, if you've been in reptiles, all the above. This is the place you're going to want to be at. Um, this podcast primarily surrounds topics around keeping and breeding reptiles. So you're in the right place that this is where you want to be. Happy Sunday to everyone. Thank you for so much for tapping in. We have an awesome, awesome show ahead of us because it's about venomous tonight, man. We got finally got a venomous keeper slash breeder coming to the table. It's been a hot minute since I've done that. So or done a show like this. So I'm super stoked. Just want to say thank you for everyone who's in the early birds. I see you guys. Uh, we're gonna get to you guys here in just a second. I got a huge announcement. I am very excited. Even though I'm doing this again, and I said I wouldn't do this, I was going to wait to 2023. But I am very excited to announce a new partnership, a new sponsorship for the channel. Something that I'm very excited uh, to fucking really represent. I mean, this is awesome. Um, and then he's representing me as well. I want to say shout out to uh, the new sponsor and the sponsor of this episode. Shout out to Robin Marklin over at Redline. Ship it. Ship it. I got a shipping sponsorship. What do you fucking know about that? Thank you so much, Robin. Appreciate you so much, first and foremost. Uh, guys, this is honestly the future. I'm not even joking. This is awesome. Mar uh, Robin has extensive history when it comes to working with shipping reptiles. Okay, I don't want to get in full detail because another thing I'm going to go ahead and just mention right now, we have an amazing podcast going down this Friday, not Thursday. You guys normally know that my main shows are on thursday nights but it's not going down this thursday night because as you guys a lot of you guys know las vegas this coming weekend reptile super show is happening so guess what i am going to do my remote podcast in person with robin marklin at the reptile super show in las vegas and we're going to get so many questions answered we're going to get deep into Everything. What is it like starting a, a reptile shipping business? Is it scary? What about competition? All the above. What is his actual knowledge? If you don't even know what his knowledge is behind shipping reptiles. Oh my God, it's going to get deep. I've had the pleasure of having Robin on before, but we're in a different circumstance here and it's going to be in person. I always love my in-person episodes. I always feel like they smack a lot harder, but I want to say first and foremost, please Go over to Redline Shipping, okay? Especially if you've had a lot of bad experiences. Not that there's anything wrong with any shipping company. I think everyone has their favorite by now for sure. But if you don't have your favorite, if you're out there just wondering, God damn it, I wish there was a better shipping company. Well, guess what? There is now an option for you to try, and that's Redline Shipping, okay? Uh, first and foremost, after you go to redlineshipping.com, um, Robin's actually providing a discount code uh, for the time being, which gets you 60% off shipping, okay? You can't really fucking comp compete with that right now. So go save yourself some money right off the bat. Go get yourself uh, a Redline Shipping label. Get that shit ready to rock and roll for your animal. And yeah, shout out to Robin Marklin. Thank you to the sponsor and be ready again for this Friday. Uh, by the way, episode is being brought to you by 702 Serpents, my boy Dominic over in Vegas, which we're going to be tapping him with him shortly as well uh, this coming weekend. But either way, so stoked. Thank you so much, Robin. I appreciate your support. Big things popping. Uh, who's here in the early birds? I know it's you know, Labor Day weekend. Shit. A lot of people are on vacation doing things, but who are the diehards in the building right now? That's what I want to know. Damn. Shout out to Blake Royal, Bama Reptiles in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day. Now, here I go, you know, skipping over the people who I feel like I work the hardest for. That's for damn sure. Shout out to my Patreon members. Okay. Now, I appreciate all the likes, all the subscribes. Just you watching this, even if you avoid hitting that subscribe button because you don't want to support me, because just so you know, if you subscribe, it does help this channel a lot. But anyways, if you're one of those people and you don't give a fuck, you just want to come back and watch, I still support. Thank you so much. I still love that. Thank you. All that is support. I appreciate it. But for whatever reason, if you want to 
tap in deeper than what you see here on this channel. If you want exclusive content, if you want to tap into a Discord with 110 plus other sick ass savage ass breeders from venomous, uh, you know, big snake keepers, chondros, ball pythons, obviously, you name it. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to sleep on the Trap Talk Patreon dis of uh, family. So go down to the link if you want to be a part of it. It's going to be awesome. We're growing by the day. But first and foremost, thank you to my Trap Talk Patreon family members like Blake. Blake's one of them. Uh, appreciate you so much. 843 Exotics, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Wise Guy Reptiles, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. House of Hiss, one of the new freshy Trap Talk Patreon members in the building. Thank you so much. Here's the homie Dom, who's actually sponsoring this Friday's remote podcast with Robin Marklin. 702 Serpents, what is good, player? Look, another new Patreon member in the building, Joe DeStefano. I love that last name. Forget about it. Just makes me want to just go to the Bronx. and Shit. Fucking, you know what I mean? Joe, thank you for your support. New Patreon member. Love it. Hexy, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Slithery Serpents, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Cade Hall, what is good? Tapping in. Vernon Kitchen, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Brandon Hernandez, Trap Talk Patreon member all day. What is good? Thanks for tapping in. Brett Taylor, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. And Condo, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. All right, guys, listen, I'm very excited uh, for tonight's episode. Uh, before we do actually dip into that episode, I do want to say uh, make sure you guys go over to my other YouTube channel. That's all about my vlogs, okay? I put out content, especially when I fly out to other people's places. I just recently put a, a new snake room tour of the Condro Kid, a.k.a. Joey. Um, so make sure you head over to the Snake Trap Sessions vlogs on YouTube. Subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you're on top of every single vlog I drop. Much love and support to everyone who goes and subscribes to that channel. It means a lot. Now, thank you so much, everyone who's been here. Hit that like button because we're going to get shit started right now. Venomous talk coming at you, but I just don't bring any venomous keeper to my table. You guys know how that, sh that shit works. I'm very picky. And there's not a lot of good venomous keepers out there. I'm not going to lie. A lot of them are just not, you know, I don't want to talk to them, to be honest, because I'm afraid I might just be MJ and I, I want to keep it cordial or I just want to bring people on the show that I, I can learn from. And uh, we got one, we got a venomous keeper that comes highly recommended from a lot of people that I look up to Patrick Holmes, um, you know, Stephen Cush, a lot of people tapped in with this guy, man. Uh, so without further ado, let's get shit fucking rolling. I hope you guys are ready. Cause it's going to be an awesome show. Whatever it is that you got to do to get your mind, right? Let's get it going right now because it's fucking showtime here. We have Alex Ander England, of England Exotics right now. Cheap. Good. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. Talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only Trap Talk. Exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, gotta love it, love it or not. I'm hot from the hop to the club to spot. Get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the everybody. Live, Alexander England. I mean, big homie Alex, but in Europe, in Europe, they call him Alexander and shit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, oh, yeah. What, what's up, buddy? How are you? Good, man. How are you living? Good. You know, just uh, wrapped up another day at the Texas Reptile Expo. You know, show season, busy time, running around, the usual. I mean, I got. I always give respect when it's due right off the bat, and I'm saying, bro, I'm in. I'm into plants, pothos, all that shit. Respect to what's behind you. I already earned a new level of respect for you. That's not even involving venomous. So, hella, I like that, man. 
So, dude, you just talked about a, a, a venomous reptile show. Was it just all about venomous, or what kind of show was it? Um, no. Uh, one of the nice things about here in Texas, um, it's a good and a bad thing, um, but we have a lot of venomous shows, which is, which is – there's, there's a real strong herp community in Texas overall. There's a lot of serious big-name keepers that, you know, aren't doing it half ass, And so – Community strong, the shows are solid, and uh, you know there's just good shows that allow venomous sales, and um, you know we're all mindful and um, responsible. I feel like for the most part, you know, and uh, yeah, so it's just it's just shows like you have out there, but we have them here, and they have venomous and stuff. So only only cooler, <laughs> you got cooler shows. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I want to go, like, I want to go to Daytona just to do, you know, some socializing and meet some folks that I'm, you know, been friends with for a while online. And, uh, you know, I want to go to Cali to check out a big show. But, and, like, when it comes time to it, I'm like, fuck, well, then I'm not working. And there's no one taking care of the animals. I'm not making money. So, you know, if you don't make dollars, it doesn't make sense, you know. That's mm-hmm. why uh, it's 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 fortunate and unfortunate, right? Though, as far as the the kind of animals or amount of animals us uh, people like us keep, because you know it it can only take one fucking day to not be there where something could go wrong, you know. And uh, not a lot of people are prepared, if not anyone's prepared, when shit happens to your collection. Only you know, only we know what to do if shit hits the fan, right? Like, uh-huh. so that's why it's like you know and i'm always someone to if i put somebody in charge and a mistake happens i'll i I know not to blame them because i have management skills now but still like in my head i want to be like fuck you like you know what i mean so and it's not it's just not their fault like it's just it's just it's just how i rather i rather shit die and go down on my watch than anyone else's watch you know what i mean Uh, if i i usually go out of town for a week one to two times a year and I have a couple of solid friends that come through and, and know my stuff, know my animals, you know, and I trust them. And uh, I tell them, don't worry, you know, every time I leave for a week, at least one thing dies. It's it's just one random ass snake out of nowhere and it, it never fails. And then they're like, oh, something died. I'm like, All right, it's just how it is. It's because I went on vacation, you know, went to enjoy myself for a little bit. I wasn't here. I'm, I might have noticed if it would have been sitting funny if I was here, but you know, here's what it is. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've been. Uh, I mean, I'm, I can't wait to talk to you about the stuff you work with because I'm a chondro guy, right? But a chondro doesn't have venom, and I feel like you work with shit just as fragile, but only more sketchy because of the obviously the the given the take of the species, but. Still, bro, like, you know, I, I'm my, my biggest accomplishment with the chondros was being able to get three to come out of the egg fully oh. perched, right? You know, super stoked. And, um, of course, one out of the three turned out to be pretty much the one not to want to eat and, uh, went, went through the ringer with that. And, and I kind of was prepared, but then I had two that was solid. And, of course, my birthday comes up two weeks ago. I go to Mexico, had a really good time, fucking awesome. I come back and, uh, keep in mind these two that have been they've been smashing meals i think they've been they're on meal eight or nine and i come back and one of them prolapsed like a really bad prolapse and i'm like oh my fucking god and so um luckily like you know it's one of those things bro like i'm sure you know you've had an experience with the snake where you're like how how's this gonna get fixed like this thing's dead like for sure or 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 something crazy and that's what i thought was gonna happen when i saw this prolapse but sure enough man there's fucking those techniques with sugar um Mm. I, i use i used um I use sugar, sugar, uh, just regular fucking table sugar. And I use preparation H and that shit got small enough to where I was able to like slight, like literally put, push, push that shit in with the fucking tiny ass probe. Uh, yeah. but long, long story short, it ended up dying. I anyway, it literally, I just fed it for the first time. It ate next day dead. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, I, not that leaving was the reason maybe that was going to happen anyways, but who knows? Like it's, you just never know you leave. You have to pay for it every time. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, like it's hard. It's hard to enjoy, like going on trips. You know, the yeah. last 
Well, like I went to Central America last year and that was cool. I wasn't too worried. And then this year I wasn't too worried, but like, you know, just going out of town, being away from my snakes, I'm like, it, it's stressful, you know? Cause like, yeah, bro. Are, they're my life, you know, like it, it's not, <laughs> It's not some weekend warrior shit for uh, fun. Every day, bro. Every day, all day, what I do. And, you know, I'm fairly successful. And I think it's because of how I go about it. And, you know, so then being away from them, not looking at them 12 times a day. Fuck with you. Not, not spraying or not doing any of this, not not getting all the you know nine thousand visual checks you get throughout the day. I'm like, fuck, I hope everything's all right, you know. This, you know, and stuff always has babies when I'm gone. Or like, <laughs> I Dude. think out of the last the last four shows I've vended, like three mornings, the day I'm supposed to leave and go to the show, I wake up and the snake's having babies, and like. I guess, I guess I'm going to be late now. And, you know, I got to pull them and get them situated and shit. And, you know, and so it's, it's like, it's, there's always something. There's always. So there, I would say for sure, one of the reasons why I'm stoked to have you on the show or, or a person of your skill on the show, because it's not easy. First off, I feel like whatever it is that you do, you have to be, has to be in your blood. Like, I, I mean, you could fucking like a YouTube video or a YouTube fucking inspire inspire person all you want but you have to really be born to do this kind of shit because it takes attention to detail and there's going to be times obviously where you don't want to do things but you have to do it which we'll talk about as well right um but well, i'm kind of like how did you get really into this game alex like was this a like just as a kid you got fucking like this was like you know typical texan fucking type shit or how how did you really come across the venomous game uh i mean so when my dad was in his teens and early 20s, I guess he was in like his teens, he lived in Missouri and worked for a little traveling like exotic zoo guy that had a trailer full of, you know, snakes and they drove around and did shows. And, you know, he did that and he caught snakes in the woods and kept pet snakes. And then, you know, so then from like two years old on, he was taking me camping, backpacking, hiking, playing in the woods. And, you know, I'm a typical boy playing in the woods. I'm chasing lizards and chasing snakes. And he told me, you know, about the native species. And I just went nuts, you know, reading and learning everything I could. I'm like six years old on and, you know, kept stuff. You know, when I was young, like back when you could go to mom and pop pet stores and see like, crazy cool species that don't you know come in anymore and uh you know eventually when i was like 16 i uh, you know, was catching copper heads and getting mangrove snakes and you know uh, uh, i met this herpetologist guy when i was like nine he taught me all sorts of interesting things and he taught me some bad habits and he taught me <laughs> i love how you kept it real bro because I mean, you yeah. got to understand if it's one thing that I give credit to people like I can't say me because I've been I've only been in this game for five years. But people like yourself is like you guys are all about showing the better example. And and back in the day, motherfuckers just didn't care. Like and, and, yeah. and like and if you didn't do the bad example, you were a pussy or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like, oh, man, I bet it was brutal, bro. I'm glad I wasn't around back then because I would have been felt like I had to prove points all the time and shit. Yeah, you know, and. Uh, as you grow and mature, your, your behavior and keeping and ideology should change also and mature. And so, you know, I, I was able to take all the good I learned and hone those things. And, you know, I think he bought me my first Cobra when I was like 18. So wow. big, angry ass, wild cop monocled and uh, meaner than shit. And, he taught me how to, you know, work with it and do some stuff and you know, taught me some bad habits with how to handle it. And, you know, as I grew and got older, I learned new things in different ways. And, you know, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm superficial like everyone else. I like pretty. I like bright colors. I like attractive, visually, you know, um, exciting animals. And, uh, 
So flipping through books when I was a kid, seeing all these bright arboreal vipers and things like that, that just, uh, that stuff caught my eye. And I just, I, I long for the days of being able to get that. And, you know, when I was first keeping venomous and vending shows and selling, this was, it was like uh, 2000, 2005, 2006, and started doing sh- venomous shows in like 07. Um, you know, there, Squamajura and, and stuff like that wasn't really around um, like it was. You know, in the early 2000s, it was around, and they had like the venomous forums and stuff. I was never on the forums because I wasn't really ever like on computers and shit back then. But, um, you Alex, know, then, Alex, real quick, what part of Texas are you in? Just so the people could know what, what part you're in. Talk, Texas is huge. So. Uh, I'm originally from Tulsa, but I'm, I live in San Antonio area. Okay. Yeah. You know what's crazy, bro, about Texas? It's so big. And I lived in Texas. I, I, li- I lived in Texas, right? But I had – shout out to me, Kyle Vargas. You know, I just had Kyle on earlier this year. And yeah. um, I thought he was two hours ahead. But he's only like an hour ahead because he's so like – you know, he's in El Paso. Is it El Paso that he's in? But he's so close to New Mexico or whatever it is that he's not two hours. It's like – so basically I was like an hour ahead of him naturally, like more than we we planned. And he was like, yo, I'm not home yet. And I'm like, what What do you mean? I told you. He's like, he's like, yeah, bro, I'm in El Paso, Texas. And I was like, oh, my God. I should have had – and so I'll never fucking – this is what you do for assuming. But never assume it's what it is in Texas because it's so big. It's gigantic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, keep, keep going, bro. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> sorry, fucked you up. I don't know. I think it was just like 2015 when Squams first started coming back in. You know, I think a couple little shipments had come in prior to that, but that was the first time that I saw them available and I got back in. And I just. Uh, and buying every single one I could in the beginning and picking through them and getting all the, you know, all the tree vipers and stuff that I, you know, got excited looking at in books when I was a kid. And I got all I, those in my room. You know? That's exactly right. Same shit, bro. I'm a dead ass. Like, I, so condors is my thing. Like, emerald tree boas. Like, I can't, obviously, I can't do the hots because I'm in Cali. My wife's not a fan. I have a problem with touching them. So, um there's that right so but you know i i have a love for venomous because school saw them in books all the time but if it wasn't a venomous snake i was looking at in a school book it was a fucking tr- green tree python or something in the amazon something high up in the trees and yeah. i looked at those i looked at those animals like like wow imagine like just imagine i remember looking looking at these things like imagine being able to own this like who, whoever will be that lucky. And I'm sitting in a room with fucking almost 30 of these now. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But it could happen so quick because now we're in a day and age where not only are, are there websites, but all social media platforms, all it takes is word of mouth. And you could get that shit to your doorstep if you could find it. You know, it's so easy to get into this. Yeah, that's that's good and bad. <laughs> good. Yeah, I would say more bad than good, unfortunate, you know, because like you said, there's not too many people that lead by good examples, especially in the venomous industry or the venomous community. Um, it's very nitpicky. And I feel like you should be nitpicky. Like I had side conversations with Kyle about how he don't fuck with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Because it's dangerous to like you, you basically associate your like whoever you associate, associate, say associate yourself with basically says that's who you are. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of you guys just love doing your own thing. Like you guys just do what you do and that's it. You guys don't look for clout. You don't look for nothing else but self enjoyment. And that's what you have to do with the fucking animal like this, bro. Like with the venomous snake, it's not for the cameras. I mean, it is educational wise, but not while you're holding it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and and I, and, and I'm sorry. I just want to say that I understand there's people out there who can legitimately read their animals and know when and when not to hold the venomous snake. But then at the end of the day, be prepared to get fucking smacked and when you get smacked there's no going back that's my all i gotta say on that yeah yeah you know i say it to everyone and i'll you know say it on here like if you're posting a picture of your snake and it's just the snake 
that's the focus. The focus is that animal, and you are showing the beauty of that snake. And okay. you're saying, look at this, and you can have something educational, or you can you you can portray them as not awful, evil creatures, and you know educate people that don't understand or are scared. If you're posting a picture and you're in it, it's a fucking selfie, and your snake is your accessory. It's not any more educational. It's not for anything other than I'm fucking cool, my sick ass snake, you know. And I, and I'll say that to anyone, and I'll argue it all day long. Like that's what it is. It's that's that's why some of the things. Uh, that are super popular online or the YouTubes or TikTok bullshit is because it's nothing more than, you know, an intention thing. And it's not about the animals. If it was about the animals, it would be different, you know. Um, I pride myself on my husbandry and the quality of my animals because they're first. They come first. It's what I can do for my snakes, not what my snakes do for me. And that's the difference. And I think, I think the serious keepers are like-minded like that. And, Bro. you know, um, we, a lot of the serious people, you know, are not out to be uh, social media pros oh. and, you know, looking for attaboys. Like, you want to keep cool fucking snakes and breed cool snakes. And, you know, that's what it's about. And learning and, and changing and growing. And, you know, I, uh, I'm i friends with everyone and I'm nice to everyone. And I, I will help anyone that texts me, people all around the world and people that I don't even like text <laughs> me and make questions. And I'll answer them because it's about the animal. Whether I like this person or think they're foolish or not, or they make poor choices with their animals, whatever, I can set that aside because me helping is going to benefit the quality of life for that snake. And if, you know, if, if that's what it's about, then that's what it's about. You know, and you can put the other personalities aside. And, uh, you know, I have, I have a core group of people that I trust them real life friends and you know they uh they're good keepers I that's my thing you know that's that rates how I feel about you as a person as your the quality of how you are doing this you know because like it, it doesn't have to be venomous it's not all about venomous stuff like we all keep snakes in boxes all different species but it's all fucking snakes in boxes some of us do it better than others. And I don't care what you keep, as long as you keep it well. As long as you do it well. So that's check, what it's like. No, I'm so I'm so sorry. Finish, finish, please. No, fine. You know, just it doesn't matter what species venomous or non venomous, just do the best you can for your animals and contribute to captive keeping and you know, herpetology, you know, if you're not some academic scientist cool and you're just a breeder person cool you know make the best quality strongest healthiest animals available to the public that benefits them you know put out the best information you can so other people grow and, and excel with their people you know i'm not some fucking academic super science guy i know how to keep snakes in boxes and you know i can make them be happy and make babies and stuff but if you ask me some crazy you know, genetics about some crazy species. And like, fuck, I don't know. You know. So, call me, tell me if I'm off on this, okay? And, and, and something just kind of just connected in my brain as far as when you said that people who are really good at what you do don't want to be on platforms for a reason. And there's a person I look up to highly in the Contra community. And I, and I always thought Condro was his thing because he loves to show off Condros. He's in the, he's in the building right now. Patrick Holmes, I'm a big Patrick Holmes fan. Okay. But if you know, Patrick Holmes, meaning if you really know, you know that he fucks with venomous. Okay. And he, he's 
from what I hear, he's really good, you know, but he doesn't advertise it. He's not somebody who likes to let people know that he fucks with Venomous. And I feel like the best Venomous keepers are like this because, A, even if you guys are putting shit out there, how easy is it for people to twist shit around and, and try to do what you're doing, what is right, but they don't do it that way. And that's the problem with so many people who want to be a certain way, but then don't follow correct protocols and they try to fucking do things themselves and when it comes to working with hots you can't fuck up like that like you know i mean what's what's like the the least thing that can happen you lose a finger you know like what the fuck well everybody wants to be somebody everybody wants validation and attaboys and everyone wants to be a cool motherfucker i love this you know that's that's that and but to do that it takes time. It takes work. It takes years of time and work and dedication and persistence. And it takes losing badass fucking snakes and losing money. And then you learn, I don't want to do that again. So I'm going to do something different and I'm going to change and I'm going to grow and I'm going to excel as a keeper in person. But nobody these days or very few people these days want to put in time and energy and work and get true respect from people that actually matter and so the way you shortcut that is you hold my little gaboon viper or my sick ass monocle and you post a picture of that on social media and everyone is like dude that's so fucking tight you're so cool that's hard and you get all these attaboys (laughs) but it's it's the shortcut bullshit way and you know all those people that are kissing your ass they don't fucking matter. They're, they're not important. The people that matter and contribute real things in herpetology and captive keeping and are out there doing real shit, they don't know your fucking name and they, they won't. And the minute you stop posting those pictures or you know you, you lose your account, you're fucking irrelevant. You're going to be gone and done. Like That's just how it is. You know If you contribute real shit that betters the species, or betters, you know, um, a community of people working towards things, you know, if you're doing real shit, that's there forever, you know, like, that, that's just how it is. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't know, I, I get kind of uh, <laughs> warm and excited talking about that shit. And, yeah, I uh, bet. I can hear it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. So, check, so check this out, Alex. I'm curious because... Um, Here's, here's one thing that I can't stand about somebody who's probably good at keeping venomous. Like, they probably got skills, right? But what matters is their platform. Like, they know they got a platform, right? And they know that they got money, right? But, like, let's just say let's just say none of that platform shit was, wasn't around, right? And let's just say it was all about leading by good example. For you, let's say I was your homie back in your hometown. I came over to your house, and I'm like, Alex, what's up, dude? I really want to keep these venomous, right? And And – you know, whatever it took for you to believe in me, I did. And next thing you know, I started an Instagram page and then you see me handling it. You see me fucking like trying to kiss it. Like I would think you would want to be like, yo, like immediately check the living shit out of me. Like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Which that's common sense to do, especially if you care about the person. If you're if you're literally caring about the person, the individual, you would do that thing. Right. But here's a, here's a plot twist on the other side of things. When it comes to people having a huge social media platform, they need one another. They need one another, right? So instead of them correcting the other person, instead of them saying, "Hey, that's probably not a good thing," zip. Hey, let me know. Let me let me know when you want to collab. I'm down to do a collab. That's, mm-hmm. And and that's what makes me mad, bro, because. You got people who could, they have way more than just venomous stuff, but why are you always showing off your venomous stuff? Like, why can't you, like, like, why is it so important for you to have that rattlesnake over your neck? Mm-hmm. Like, you have so much other stuff to show off, and, yeah. and uh, it's, it's all to prove a point, you know, prove, I, and, and, and that sucks, but that's like the, that's the, that makes you guys look really bad, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, you know, as we have recently seen one person can fuck up keeping for a whole city and change whole regulations and states. One person. Uh, one dipshit can do that. And oh. the other dipshit crew is like, 
yeah, it's cool, it's fine, it's whatever, shit happens. Like, fuck that. That's not all right. You know, that's stupid. And it's careless and foolish and there's many other things. And like, how about instead of posting a picture of you holding a snake, why don't you uh, post a picture of some fucking eggs? Let's let's see you holding up a tub of babies or some eggs. That won't happen. <laughs> That one, if you see them, you know, finger banging their snakes all the time, yeah. you know, you can see them posting babies. I know there's like one kid here in the States that I know of that, you know, holds his shit and he's bred a few, a handful of species, which is cool, you know, so he, he's doing something more than most of the other people that want to hold stuff. But like, you know, and the thing, like, these people it's like it's how i bond with these snakes it's how i love these snakes if you really understand the behavior or how snakes work they're not fucking social creatures no some, they want to be left alone some species, alone. some species are social and communal but it's very few and so they don't want any interaction they don't want to chill and so Alex, when, Alex, Alex, no matter the species, I think a snake yeah. in general, I don't care if it's a fucking 20 pound or not 20 pound, 200 pound, 20 foot retic that just sits there. It's there because it can't move. It's too fucking fat. Like you, yeah. they, they hate, not hate people, but they want to be left alone. Like just yeah. leave them alone, bro. That's, I, I, I believe in that so much. Yeah. And so these, you know, like, You'll, you'll see someone be like, oh, so-and-so came over and we had a session and they post a bunch of pictures of them all taking turns holding shit. And it's like, yeah, bro, let's fucking just get together and stress all our shit out. You want to come over and like, we'll stress out my snakes. Go ahead and bring and pack some of yours up and bring them and we'll fucking stress them out too. And like, let's just get together and stress all our shit and it'll be tight and we'll post some pictures and it's like, and then they're like, man, it, it died and I've only had it for two years or. You know, it, it will never breed. And you're like, oh, I fucking wonder why. You know, like, what about like, okay, if you care about somebody, stand up for what what is right. When I was going back to you about the point of me being your homie and me doing not the right thing, like you would probably go in on me because how much not only did you invest on telling me what the right thing is to do, but how bad it could really fuck up the whole community by one. You just said one person, bro. There's millions of people doing this shit wrong. I'm telling you right now. You know what I mean? Like. It's it, it's it's almost like to the point where people. That's why I feel like other people don't care because it's like, well, you know, what's it gonna like, what me stopping? What's that gonna do? But that's yeah. it could do a lot. But I don't know, man. Like it's like I said. Here's the thing, bro. I've been to Florida a lot. Florida's a different breed of people. They just don't care of anything that's not Florida. And I I love. Dude, I got homies in Florida. I love. I got. I love my homies. But Florida is a different <laughs> built place, and they are on a, an adrenaline type like there's, there's something in their water that makes them just want to fucking jump on crocodiles with a fucking cobra around their neck god bless them but there's so many people who aren't in a place like florida that think that they could do that and they can't it's just like like florida's a sinking ship like we all say this florida is a sinking ship what they yeah. do in florida we don't want to do in florida what do one more time what they do in florida we don't want to do in florida we have to do the opposite Okay, Connor, if you're 16 year old Connor, high schooler, don't don't do what they do. It's not cool. Shit, sorry. Yeah. No, I, I agree. All right. So listen, you're a father, bro. Respect. I feel like you're a really good father. You you I feel like you have big pride of your boy, uh Rory. That's his that's his name, right? I have him and then I have a younger one. I have Toby. So Rory's about to be twelve and Toby's about to be four. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So this kid in the thumbnail, this is Rory. Yeah, that was. He's, like he's about to be. Say that again. I'm sorry. I think that was like uh, three or four years ago. Maybe four years ago. Maybe five. I don't know. So this kid is going to be how old? Rory, this is Rory, right? How old is Rory going to be? 12? He'll be 12. Wow. Okay. So father of two. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah. But could, could even be more scary when it comes to keeping the stuff that you keep. Am I right? Uh, I mean, there's some things, you know, and I laugh at people when we're at, when I'm at a show and they're like looking at snakes or whatever. And they're like, well, I, I would, but I got kids at home, you know, and I can't do them. Like, so just fuck my kids or like, 
you you have guns in your house and they're like well yeah i'm like can you have them locked up safely and secure and they're like yeah and i'm like and you tell your kids it's not a toy and to not touch them and they're like well yeah and i'm like oh wow so it's it's kind of the same thing you know uh rory's been around this stuff his whole life and so you know it's nothing new to him but you know not only are the rooms secure and all the enclosures lock and then the doors on the outside have uh, external locks also. So when Toby, my three-year-old is here, when he's here and awake, those rooms stay shut, locked. I don't go in them. Excuse me. I don't go in them. I'm not doing snake stuff. You know, when he's here for the weekend or a night during the week, like, while he's awake, I'm I'm just chilling with the kids and I'm not doing anything snake wise. And then, you know, when he goes to bed, I'll go in one of the rooms and do what I need to do or whatever. But, you know, things are locked, safe, secure, you know, and as I mentioned, I look at all these enclosures a hundred times a day, you know, um, so they're constantly getting visually, uh, you know, inspected for um, security issues, you know, any problems, things like that. I always know where the snakes are, you know. So, yeah, um, I wouldn't do all this or have these things in my home if I was concerned that it would potentially hurt one of my kids because my boys are my life, my purpose. You know, snakes are my passion and, you know, but raising them into good little man is, is my purpose and uh, you know so it, it, it it's something I do seriously it's not a fucking rattlesnake in a 10 gallon with a screen top in the kitchen on the mantel where the kids can knock it over or get to it and jack with it you know it's safe and secure but and naturally always you want to you know stay on your toes and be mindful of it because kids are not the sharpest in some aspects you know that's why we're supposed to keep them alive and it's our job because they're not smart enough to do that sometimes anyway. hey, hey alex i'm curious you know it, in in the position that you're in right now meaning how much hours you have behind the practices and training that you've done with this venomous right um i think florida has a certain rule count that you need to get a permit. It's like a thousand hours, which a lot of people don't, they don't a lot of people don't have that thousand hours. Let's be real. Um, but in your eyes, when do you feel like someone is ready to have a venomous collection in, in your eyes? Like, let's say it was up to Alex, right? Like, let's say it was really on your call. When do you feel like somebody is really ready to start purchasing and keeping venomous? I'm not saying breeding, not even the breeding part. Cause that's a whole nother fucking, that's a whole nother, you know, entity, right? Yeah. But I'm talking about just the keeping, having as a display. Like, what? How much do you feel like needs to be done before that could happen? Um, I feel like you should should have been keeping snakes for a few years. You know, have some. You should be well rounded with like basic husbandry techniques. But I'll tell you, there's people out in the social medias that have wild ass crazy mambas taipans mangs and they have crazy shit they don't know how to fucking probe a snake and they don't know how to sex a snake they don't have tubes you know which are all basic things that you should have you know but i guess you can get those after you get the mambas you know whatever that's that's <laughs> their, their deal but uh i feel like you should be able to Think critically. I think that applies to all keeping. You know, you have to be able to look at an animal, no matter what type or species, and be like, it's sitting funny, or there's some discoloration in the corner of its mouth, or it's being lethargic or, or something, and be able to see those things and kind of get those fixed, you know, because venomous snakes have issues too. They have all those same problems. They just have uh, the ability to uh, smoke you while you're trying to fix those things. So I feel like you, you you need to have that basic stuff pretty down pat. So that way, if the situation arises with venomous, then you can think, okay, it's not wanting to eat, and so I need to assist it. So I have this here set of tubes that I've used numerous times. Um, I have 
you know, multiple sizes of forceps tweezers that I can use. And I know how to tube a snake and I can get it tubed, hold it in this hand and I can feed a pink down the tube in the forceps. And what, was the, what was the first time you did that? Uh, I don't actually do it like that. I've always just pinned the little basket and done it like that. But, but what was the first time you actually, I meant, when was the first time you ever assist fed a fucking venomous snake? Uh, I learned how to assist feed venomous with baby Malayan pit vipers, the Calisalas marotostoma, and they were about five inches long, and I was getting them for $15 a piece way back in the day. And oh, my God. It, want to eat i didn't know what to do and you know my buddy at tu was like well you gotta assist feed him you gotta pin him and you know kind of help the pinky down its throat with the tweezers and blah blah blah. i was like all right and uh like the second time i was doing that uh on a snake that was my friends i blew out his throat with the tweezers because the pinky was too big i didn't fucking know what i was doing and so i was like ah Okay, that's a learning experience. Yeah, my friend, one of many. My, yeah, my friend's like, can you save it? I'm like, ah, oh, let me put some super glue <laughs> on it and see what happens. But, you know, and, but since then, I've probably assisted, I don't know, thousand snakes and, you know, predominantly all venomous. And I've never had any injuries or accidents like that, you know, because I learned as I go and I realize if something doesn't work, you do it. But, um, you know, uh, you know, and I've started Russell's Vipers and shit and pinning them and assist feeding them. And do I suggest someone brand new going hands on and pinning a snake? No, there's other ways. There's the sponge technique, there's tubes, you know, there's all kinds of safe ways to do it. It's not what I do. It's not what I learned. I've done those. I know those. But I do my way that I've done for years, and I get good, consistent results. You know, um, I think that's one of the things that benefits of, that that my results um, have been good is that I I know what works for me and my style of keeping, and I don't change it for shit. I do what I need to do, and if if I learn that something can be done better, then I change that. Obviously, you no. Know? Now, you know, I'm curious because, you know, somebody in your shoes probably works with a different number of species of hots, correct? Like, I mean, how, overall, how many species of hots do you keep? Um, venomous species? I don't know. I might have. Twenty, five, twenty, twenty-five million species, something like that. How many? Twenty or twenty-five million. God damn. Okay. So, I don't know. Okay, so um, you know, and I feel like a lot of these come obviously in different climates, obviously and whatnot. So, how are you climate controlling your room? I mean, do you have these separate? where some are colder than the others, some have more high humidity. Like, how's that being delegated? So, so if you look at all the people that are truly successful with a species or a few species, they, they specialize, they focus. They, they're not doing 97 different species and you know that come from different parts of the world and different climates and things like that like right. you know you look at your green tree people they have a ton of green trees they don't have green trees and then uh, green anacondas and you know crotalis price and montane shit they everything they do is kind of similar and streamlined so i have a bunch of different species but all of the species even you know from different parts of the world They all live in about the same habitat, the same kind of climate, the same, you know, kind of elevation. And so my room, like the room we're in now, is my arboreal room. And it's strictly arboreal. And there's, I think, 90 snakes in here. And the room during the day is a baseline 79 and 
things that, you know, and the wall that's behind me is juveniles, males, you know, grow out stuff like that. And so with the baseline of 79 and then the fluorescent lights you can see across the top, that fluorescent light gets the top of the enclosure to about 83, 84. And then the floor of the enclosure, you know, up here is about 80, 81, you know, and then you drop down a shelf and it's the still the 83, 84 up top and about 80 at the floor. And then things that like cooler temps, like, you know, eyelash, um, Trimeraceris, Pariahs, things like that. I run them on the floor, the mm -hmm. lowest level of the shelf, where their baseline bottom of the tank is, you know, 78 or so. And then the top is, you know, 82, 83. So you can, you know, stack things accordingly in your room. And then on the wall behind us, um, you know, I have the uh, um, Craspidocephalus, um, Pariahs, Trimeraceris on the floor. And then the middle shelf is all female squams that don't have a fluorescent light. They have single domes on each cage for basking females. And so they get the baseline 79, 80 floor, but then up top they're about 88, 90 for whenever they're in gestation, the females can bask and the babies and all that. So this room, and then at night, you know, I, I don't sleep at fucking 80 degrees. And, you know, the room drops, and everything that's in an enclosure is a year, year and a half and up. So they can deal with the night drops. And, you know, all the babies that are born in here for the first year stay in a six-core shoebox setup, a sterile setup, and they have, you know, belly heat on the rack. Because when they're babies, you don't want the fluctuations uh, as much as what will happen in the room, you know. So that way they're able to, the older animals that need to start cycling can get the temperature situation. Um, my other room is colubrids um, and, you know, miscellaneous um, stuff that comes and goes, you know, hold back shelves of, uh, you know, things coming from other countries or, you know, other people. And, uh, and that room stays just at constant 79. And then I do the same thing. Things that need to be cooler, put them lower in the room. Things that need to be warmer, put them higher in the room, you know, and, they're all different species, but you know, in that room, everyone thrives. It's fine. My colubrids, when it's time to cool them, they go in the garage and sit on the cold concrete and eat and are gone. You know? Wow. The arboreal stuff doesn't need quite, you know, uh, cycling like that. It's a big thing for the arboreal species. It's typically the switch from dry to wet season. It's a big thing, and then some, some fluctuation in temperature. Now, I'm, I'm curious, you know, because how many clutches at this point have you had, or, or litters, I, I guess? I mean, are you getting clutches or litters? I'm not sure what species are doing for you. Um, I had nine litters of swans so wow. far this year. Um, nine know, litters. Wow, that's crazy. Last year, I had 12. Um Every year, I have at least five or six, but in the last few years, I've been like eight, nine, twelve, you know, ten. And granted, you know, some of those litters, you know, just like with breeding anything, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you get slugs. Sometimes you get stills. You know, sometimes there's, there's things like that, you know, just like any other thing, you know, just because two humans get together and and have sex doesn't mean they're going to, you know, be able to conceive and make a baby or the baby's right. going to be viable, things like that. So all right. that, that, all that stuff is with snakes too. And, you know, I tell people, I'm like, if you haven't had losses, you haven't been keeping long enough, you know, you're still new. And uh, so, you know, out of the nine litters this year, I think six were good and were good babies. And then I had like still and some slugs and, 
And I had three litters of flat nose pit vipers this year. I had um, the litter of the Romanius, which is Indian bamboo. That, that was a U.S. first. They had never been bred in the States before, so that's pretty you bred, you, you bred You bred cobras too? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Got a clutch of the Cape Cobras. That's, <laughs> that's sick, bro. Holy it's shit. Cool. This one was so mm -hmm. hard. You know, and then I, I bred a bunch of uh, bull snakes and rat snakes because bull snakes and rat snakes are like my my second love. But um, no, I got to ask you, Alex, with the live litters that you're having, I mean, how many of these are actually giving you a hundred percent success uh, rate? Like, you know, basically coming out healthy ratio. Um, I don't know, probably. I have I, I win more than I lose, you know. I every year some shit doesn't go smoothly, but comparatively, you know, I win way more than I lose. But that's it. It's numbers, you know. That's just when you're doing any numbers and you have a bunch of living things, some shit doesn't go perfectly. But more often than not, uh, I'm pretty consistently successful, with, or have been lucky enough to be successful with most things i try shit man now i mean i don't know i gotta ask you i mean has there been a point where you've been kind of like thinking like fuck i got too much going on like i don't know what i'm gonna do with all this um like as far as what's what's coming or or have you been always been able to sell what you produce um well i try to stagger things i try to stagger pairs you know, so that way I'm not overloaded. And, uh, you know, because so with keeping, I think part of being a mature, um, well-rounded keeper is knowing your limit of how many animals you can have without your husbandry standards um, faltering. You know, excuse me, you know what I mean? Because if you got 500 snakes and they're all dirty as fuck, you're not doing it right. You're not, you're not killing it with you know what I mean and so I'm really careful to not have too much to where I can't maintain and keep up because I'm really hard on myself and my standards are you know to most people kind of you know crazy and, and um you know but I, I wouldn't have it any other way mm -hmm. but um you know and squams squams are the easiest fucking snakes to to get going you know they eat it literally day one the day they're born you start feeding them and you know um i my stuff sells pretty well even with them you know 500 imports coming in you know here and there and them being dirt cheap and buying balls or whatever like i still can't you know keep a pile of my offspring laying around because it's I guess, you know, my snakes are expensive, but people pay it because I guess they know that I'm a decent keeper and that um, they know that they're going to get a healthy, strong animal. And so they're willing to pay that, you know. You, it's as much as anything. You, you get what you pay for. And so I'm very fortunate that my stuff sells well and I have waiting lists typically and a lot of my snakes go to repeat customers, people that already have 20, 30 of my animals. One of my homies just got a super smoking litter of squam babies from animals I sold him years ago as babies. And, uh, you know, now he's cranking out offspring, my bloodline, and they're, you know, smoke show babies. And he's, he's through the roof with it pumped. And, you know, that's pretty dope. And he's... All the babies came out big. All the babies smashed food from day one, and you know they they have primo snakes and he's pumped and that, uh, that's good shit. That makes me happy. You know. No, I have to, I have to ask you, man. I have a wrap up question before we get into some hot seat questions, uh, real quick, Alex. Um, you know, obviously with you kind of seeing how things overall have been when it comes to leading by examples. I mean, what would be your first piece of advice to anyone who lives in a place where they could get any venomous they want and they're even looking at stuff right now as we speak but they haven't done it yet what would be your best piece of advice to that person um 
look at, you know, um, decide what really, you know, first figure out what species you want to think about keeping, you know, figure out what species you look at that you're just like, when you see it, you're like, that is beautiful. God, that's amazing. And then yeah. learn, learn all you can about that species so you can keep it alive. Um, you know, and then think about the realistic uh, potential issues, you know, of keeping venomous snakes, you know. Um, just, you can get fucked up. You can lose a finger. You can lose use of a hand. You can die, you know. Um, if something gets out, it can hurt someone that you love, you know. It's it's serious, and people minimize it and make it look like just a, a whatever thing. But like, it's it's a serious thing, you know. Um, so respect it and take it take it serious. And so you know, look at the big picture. Don't right. don't think about the sick ass cred you're gonna get and the attaboys and the high fives. Think about you know uh, what would happen if I lose part of my right hand or if I'm in ICU for a week is my family going to have uh, you know a way to pay the bills or you know um, yeah you gotta just just take it serious I don't know I guess. don't be dumb don't be dumb I mean it's as simple as that sounds some people just don't get it <laughs> you know what I mean it's like fuck good luck I wish you the best but uh Listen, man, I could just tell you right now, I feel like I would have you uh, definitely back on for a round two at some point because we definitely could talk more and more about this. Um, yeah, I like do, we just talked a bunch of shit, but that's fine. Yeah, listen, we, we, we'll we definitely do this again for sure. Um, we do have some hot seat questions, though, before you dip out. Um, are, you cool, are you cool with that? Yeah. All right, listen. All right, so hot seat questions for the homie Alexander England. I don't need an explanation. Just go ahead and bust them out as you can, okay? You ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Hot seat questions for Alexander England coming in hot. Here we go. Frozen thought or live? Frozen. Eight cut or no cut? Situation dependent. Period. If you, Would you do it or not ever? Uh, I let them hatch more than I've cut. Okay. Favorite color, Viper? I don't know. I don't know. If you I had like, a pick, if you if you had a if 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 a law hit your place and and it was so serious, they're like, "Fool, you can't have multiple color vipers. You need to pick one right now." And and, and it's going down. What would it be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably say uh, my white squams. Damn. Yeah, I would say so too. White squams, fuck. Um, what about a red chondro neo or a yellow chondro neo? Red. Pre first shed meal or a post first shed meal? Shed from day one, no matter what's or feed from day one, no matter what species. Damn respect. Okay, yay imports or boo imports? I built my whole collection in breeding empire off imports everybody's scared of imports if you're not stupid and you just leave them alone they thrive and grow i've never wormed or treated a single one for parasites set them up no stress they're happy they're healthy now i have generations of babies from import animals so import all day long i'll take a, a fresh import and put it in my room and collection quicker than i will some shit from someone else's collection if you could import one species of reptile from anywhere around the world to your collection right now, no matter what it is, what would it be? Um, probably uh, a Ferris Desei. And what? It, can you put that in like dumb people terms, like myself? Mount Kenyan bush viper. They're smoking Thank black and gold. Just think of like a real pretty black and gold, shiny, blinged out, you know, uh, squam or pleurachus. They got more of a pleurachus build, but yeah, just black and gold, shiny, smoking thing. 
can you shoot me a pic of one of those after this? Like, just send me. A, I'm I'm curious to see it. Um. Yeah. All right. What about one reptile nobody should ever import? Leave it the fuck alone. Does not does not need to be imported. Um. I'd be kings. Mm, true. Steak or fish? Uh, I like fish. Nice. I mean, I love steak, but I love fish. Yay sports or boo sports? Yeah, boo. Yay alcohol or boo alcohol? No, nah, I don't drink. 420, 420 friendly or probably not? Nah, ten almost ten years needle free, no Damn. drugs, nothing. Period. Congrats, that's huge. Mad respect. Van Halen or Sammy Hagar? Um, I don't know. Maybe Sammy. <laughs> respect. West Coast rapper, East Coast rap. Um, probably uh, East Coast. Like okay. small Greek six, Memphis, all that. All right, little little word association. Say the first thing that ever comes to mind. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Substrate. Dirt. Milk. Cookies. Stuck shed. Mm, fresh water. FedEx shipping. Cookies. First time reptile keeper. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why that one makes me laugh all the time because it just gets people like they just don't know what to say. There's so many things so that they see. <laughs> ah. I fucking love it. I love it. Instagram trolls. Block them. If you had to get rid of one platform forever, never coming back, no matter what, is it going to be Facebook or Instagram? Which one has to go, Alexander England? TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> I think I think TikTok's a given, but I want to know Facebook or Instagram. If it came down to those two, which one would you get rid of? Probably get rid of Facebook. Damn. Coming from somebody heavily respected on Facebook, laying it down how it is. Hey, bro, what an amazing podcast. Okay, I got to say thank you so much for dropping your knowledge. Like I said before, I'm going to have you back on the show 110%. Uh, we had up to 50 people at one point tapping in on this Sunday. What do you have to say to everyone who was enjoying this podcast and a big support of yours? What do you have to say to anyone? I appreciate all of you and all the – nice things and the kind words and support these these people think that i'm somebody and they like are really respectful and say a lot of really kind things and all those nice things make my skin crawl sometimes and feel weird and and i appreciate it you know and you know uh i don't know i'm i'm grateful for the respect I have from people. And, uh, um, you know, let's just all try to do the next right thing and move forward and progress as keepers. You know, contribute to make things better. Don't be a part of the fucking problem. Now, let me ask you one last question too, bro. I mean, what's your big plan with shows overall? I mean, do you... Is that going to always be a part of your thing, or do you feel like at some point you would like to maybe just not have to rely on shows? I mean, overall, what, what do you think? About that? I mean, I don't, I don't rely on shows to pay the bills. The shows, shows don't pay the bills. Um, you know, animals hitting the ground, getting established, and getting shipped out and sold on the regular day in and day out. That's what pays the bills. Shows are awesome because it's a weekend away from the crib and you get to hang out with friends and you talk about snakes and you laugh and you say dumb shit and you have a good time. If you sell some snakes and make some money, that's amazing and that's great. And, you know, 
usually I do pretty decent at shows, you know, um, and it's, you know, fairly consistent. Um, but, you know, um, I don't know, I'm kind of spaced, but I like doing shows, you know, I, I, I only do the venomous shows, you know, um, because it doesn't make sense to take time away from the animals or get my kids, to, you know, being watched or whatever to go somewhere just for funsies if it's not work. But, um, you know, I, I enjoy shows. I want to go to a Tinley sometime at least once, you know, or, or somewhere in some of these big shows just to go meet some folks. But, uh, oh, love to meet. I mean, in Ar- are you going to be at Arlington in September? Or obviously we're in September now, but are you going to be at Arlington? I don't know yet. I'm going to try to see. Um, I think I've, I've been to that show maybe two times. Um, it just depends on if I have the little one for the weekend. If he's here, then, you know, we'll be chilling here. But if I don't have him, uh, I might try to jet up, you know, and, and go and see some folks. Um, so we'll see. I'll shoot you a message and let you know if I'm going to swing through and you know, should we catch up and shoot shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm shows is my thing, bro. I mean, especially going in 2023, I'm going to be going to any main show. So anytime you plan on wanting to go to a show, let me know. I would love to link up with you, bro. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, man. Well, guess what? That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Alex or England. Ladies and gentlemen. Anything you got to say before we dip? Or are you good? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, bro. I'll talk to you soon, man. Take care. Thank you. See ya. What an amazing episode, Venomous talk wrapped up thank you so much for tapping in man i know it's a holiday weekend a lot of people out doing their thing uh if you tapped in late into this please get that like button liked please i appreciate it but what an amazing topic what an amazing uh overall podcast thank you again for any super chats that we're giving Ta- uh again thank you to anyone top uh being involved in the live chats i appreciate it now as always on sundays uh, we are going to be doing our Trap Talk Patreon Zoom meeting. So, again, if you want to tap in more than what you see here, if you want that VIP experience, if you just want to tap into the Trappers in the Discord, well, guess what? Go down to the link below, click on the Trap Talk Patreon family link, join the Patreon family, and then in that page that you'll see, you'll see the link to the Trap Talk Zoom session. I can't wait to see you Trappers in a minute. And guys, I can't wait to see you guys in Arlington in a couple weeks. I'm fucking excited. I got a big show lined up. I hope you guys are ready. I got a big show lined up this whole week. I hope you guys understand what's coming. Um, Really cool guests happening Friday, like I already mentioned. Again, one more time, I want to say shout out to the sponsor, Robin Marklin over at Redline Shipping. Head over to Redline Shipping. Get your first fucking discount through robin using his discount code robin six zero and then be ready for trap talk with robin marklin breaking down the whole red line shipping mission statement all the above okay tune in friday it's gonna go down 6 p.m pacific standard time patreon members i'll see you guys in about five minutes enjoy the rest of your night i'll catch you guys here tomorrow night for new breed on the block and i'm out Cheat.